What would you get if you took the basic idea behind Castlevania of a sprawling castle location to explore, stripped it down to focusing on near pixel perfect platforming, challenging boss fights, and further broke up each area into sub levels, with each one built around the powers you successively gain? That was a mouthful, but Bug Studio Six Souls is exactly what you'd get. In Six Souls, we join Jack and his dog Butch as they search for the abandoned Clifford Castle to find that sweet, sweet loot. Unfortunately for them, the castle was abandoned for a good reason, and before you can say evil is afoot, Jack and Butch are embroiled in a supernatural affair that'll take them from the deepest depths of the castle to its highest tower, searching for a way to rescue the Clifford family from the clutches of an evil sorcerer. It's a simple and intriguing concept that channels shades of Castlevania, but Six Souls isn't a Metroidvania. Instead of a large open world to explore, the developers have opted for a world and level by level approach, reminiscent of Super Mario Bros. Each area of the game is themed, such as the library and the dungeon, and each is broken down into smaller sub-levels, think World 1-1 and then World 1-2, so on and so forth. Reaching the end of one section pops you right into the next, with your stat count for collectible objects, time taken, and amount of deaths shown when you pick your game file and choose a level. Initially, Clifford Castle looms over the landscape as you make your way towards it and learn to control Jack. The moveset is nothing you haven't seen before. You can jump, block, attack with a sword, wall jump, climb up walls for short periods, and slide down them as well. The most important tool in your arsenal, though you might not know this at the beginning, is your binoculars, which are used to scope out each area. They'll become indispensable later down the line, when you have to start planning your moves carefully. Your trusty sidekick, Butch, isn't just for show either. Even though he spends most of his time in Jack's backpack, Butch is every bit as important as Jack, so you'll have to swap between the two in almost every area. Butch can squeeze into areas Jack can't, and has a double jump, but Butch can't fight, so you need to be careful when using him. Once you reach Clifford Castle and its twisting passageways and spike-lined walls and floor, you'll begin to see why mastering the basics is so important. There's very little room for error, and it only becomes harder once you start picking up the game's titular souls that grant you omnidirectional dashes. What starts out simple enough with a single dash, which you can use in the air and recharges once you touch the ground, quickly becomes more complicated when you pick up a second and a third, with each area designed around linking these moves together. It's not far-fetched to say that at points, you'll be continuously air-drifting over corners, desperate to reach a safe area. Platforming is a one-hit kill affair though, any of the spikes and other environmental hazards will pop you right back to the beginning of the area, but thankfully there are no load times between respawns, so you're right back in the action. It's a testament to the developer's design skills that Six Souls is an absolutely addictive experience. The near pixel perfect platforming that is needed to succeed never once had me wanting to switch off my console or wish I could throw it against a wall. Instead, each platforming section in which I died had me obsessively retrying it until I got it right. Or because I wanted to, and not because I had to. Each completed section felt like a mini fist pumping victory, and suffice to say, my thumbstick received an incredible workout. As a more platforming oriented experience, combat takes a backseat to the high flying shenanigans in Six Souls. Yes, there are enemies in each area, but there's a limited amount of them, and ultimately, they're just more obstacles to overcome. It's possible to entirely skip fighting them, with combat really reserved for the game's bosses. Now Jack has three health bars, and you can usually block three attacks, unless it's a big one. If your block is broken, you stagger for a brief moment, but that's usually enough to receive a grievous wound. The trick to effectively beating the bosses is to use your dashes during the fights, to either avoid damage, or reach an area that will drop the boss's shield. Of course, memorizing their attack pattern is essential. As an example, the monster book boss in the library can be beaten without taking a hit, if you time your moves correctly to avoid his projectile attacks, and reach the books that are providing him a shield. Once a shield drops, he goes into a stagger state, and this is when you wail on him and repeat until he's dead. These fights are not complex, but they are challenging and require a fair amount of timing. If you're looking for more, once you complete the game, you unlock Adventure Mode, which is an even harder version of the campaign, in which everything is a one-hit kill. However, by the time you finish the campaign the first time around, you should actually be used to that during the platforming sections. Visually, Six Souls is a very pretty looking 2D pixel art affair, 
though by now the art style will be familiar to anyone who's dipped their toes into the indie platforming scene. Animations are well done throughout, and there's a nice fluidity to the motion when you're dashing around with Jack. On the audio side, the game has a pretty catchy soundtrack, though all the characters speak in a gibberish language, with dialogue text boxes to fill you in. In theory, Six Souls is the sort of game that should have had me clenching my teeth. Yet, the short levels, with their challenging and interesting design, kept me coming back for more, regardless of how many times I unwittingly let Jack meet the business end of a spike. Fans of challenging indie platformers should certainly not let this budget indie gem slip under their radar. 